Now we'll look at how we can multiply and scale UVs so we can repeat textures across a surface. We will look at how UV values can be interpreted as 2D points, and how, just like 2D points, UV values can be moved. Multiplying points moves points away or towards the origin, which is the center of the coordinate system. This changes where the texture is sampled and makes the resulting texture on the surface appear larger or smaller. Here we see a UV value being represented as a 2D vector. When we multiply a vector, we multiply the separate components individually. We can see the result of multiplying the U component, which increases its value and extends it out in the U direction. Multiplying the V component does the same in the V direction. The crossing point of the new U and V values is the new combined UV value. This has the overall effect of increasing the length of the original vector, and hence where the texture will be sampled. Before, the original UV value sampled the texture at one point, and the new extended UV value, which was caused by the multiplication, means that the texture will now be sampled further away from the 0, 0 origin. That effectively pulls the texture sample to the original location, and the whole texture appears smaller. The things to note here are that multiplying by a positive number shrinks the sampled texture, and a straight multiplication always scales from the origin. We often want to scale around the origin, so things don't just scale towards the bottom right. But texture coordinates are usually in the 0 to 1 range by design, so a straight multiplication will do that by default. The solution is to offset the UVs, which is just another term for adding and subtracting. Offsetting by 0.5 in both directions centers the UVs. Everything has shifted by the same amount. The middle of the texture is now the origin 0, 0, which when you multiply by any other number doesn't change. Everything else, however, moves away from that center point. The only thing you have to remember to do is to shift everything back by 0.5 to get it back to the original center. There's also another use for multiplying UVs, and that's for making textures repeat across a surface. Here, we are visualizing the UV plane as red and green colors from 0 to 1. Multiplying them increases all values as we have seen before. This results in a repeated texture. What is happening here is that previously we are starting from the 0 to 1 range, and multiplying by a number, for example 4, turns that range into 0 to 4. Because of a property of texture sampling called the wrapping mode, the UVs behave as if the UVs that increase above 1, like from 1 to 2, just get treated as though they are 0 to 1 again. So here we are in Unreal, and I'm going to create a material to demonstrate UV multiplication, and I'll call it UV scale. I'll double click to open that material and dock it into the main window. And I'll also switch to the left view, change it to lip mode, and preview the material on a plane mesh to make it easier to see what's going on. I'll just zoom out a bit and close the palette window for now. Let's create a texture sample node by right clicking and typing TEXT and it should be highlighted there. And I'm going to choose a texture from the starter content called T underscore spark underscore core. Let's rearrange a bit and I'm going to plug the color output from the texture sample into the emissive color slot of the material so that we see just the pure color of the texture. The next thing we want is a set of default texture coordinates so that we have something to multiply. So right click and type COO, and there it is highlighted, and we'll plug it straight into the UV input of the texture sample. Of course, that doesn't change anything, so let's hold the M key on the keyboard and click on the canvas to create a multiply node. Then we'll connect the UV output to the multiply node A input and multiply it with a constant, which we can create by holding the one key and clicking on the canvas. Then we'll connect that to the multiply, set its value to one, and connect the multiply to our sample node UV slot. So we're still where we started, so let's up the multiplier to 2, and then to 3, and then to 4. We can see the resulting texture is repeating according to the multiplication factor we've applied. So let's set the multiplier back to 1, which is no scaling, and let's try changing the multiplication factor so that we multiply down. Going to 0.8, then 0.5, and then 0.2 shows that multiplying down the UVs effectively scales up the texture. It also scales towards the bottom right, so let's see how we can offset by 0.5 to re-center the UVs and scale from the middle. We'll make a bit of room and create a subtract node and connect our default coordinates to it. Then we'll hold the 2 key and click on the canvas to create a constant 2D vector. And we'll give it a value of 0.5 for both its components and subtract from the UV coordinates. Let's hook it up to our multiply node and now, rather than look at the texture at this stage, 
Have a look at the UV coordinates after the subtraction and how the 0.0, .0 position, which is the black bit in the middle, is now centered. There's also now the issue of the texture repeating in areas where we now have negative UVs. This is because the default wrapping behavior. That was useful for when we wanted things to repeat, but in this case, we want just a single texture. The way we do that is to go to our texture sampler node and change the sampler source mode from the default, which is wrap, to clamp. Now we have centered the UV values, we can multiply them so that they all scale around the 0, 0 origin point in UV space. Let's scale it by 2. Then to get the UVs back to the right range to sample the texture, we have to add back 0.5. So we'll create an add node, connect the UVs into the first slot, and then we'll connect our 0 0.5 constant 2D vector we already have into the second slot. Connect that to our texture sampler, and we have scaled and centered UVs for sampling the texture. One small thing which we might want to change is how the UVs scale as we increase the multiplication factor. When we were scaling for repetition, the multiplication factor for scaling the UVs worked out nicely, because it gave us the number of repetitions we wanted. Now we want to use this just for pure scaling, and we're getting a smaller texture when we increase the multiplier. For instance, at a scale of 1 we get no scaling, and at 2 we get a half size texture, and at multiplications of 3 and 4 it just keeps getting smaller. And at 0.5, the texture doubles, and at 0.25, it gets four times bigger. We can manipulate this factor before it gets used so that it's more intuitive to use as an artist. Currently, it's the inverse of what we want. So to invert this, we can simply use the number one divided by the multiplication factor. So I'll just rearrange a bit here, and I'll right-click and create a divide node. Connect up the multiplication factor to the second input of the divide node. That's important because the order that you do division in matters and you get different results if you put the multiplier in the first input. We want one as the default value for the first input, which is what the node is set to upon creation. Then we connect the result of the division to the multiply node as our new inverted multiplication factor. And we can see that by changing the multiplier, the texture now gets scaled according to the number we have entered. Multiplying by 0 0.5 halves the size, 0 0.25 is a quarter, and 0.1 is a tenth of the size. Then multiplying up by 1.5, 2, and 3 scales up accordingly. With this divide node, we want to prevent an accidental divide by 0, because that's an undefined operation, and should be impossible. So we can create a max node, and we want it to give us back the maximum number out of the first input, which is our mult factor, and another default number, which is a really small but not quite 0 number. So if we enter 0, that small number will be output of the max node, because it's the larger of the two. Now one more thing we can do here is provide a way to multiply the image by different amounts across the whole image, and also be able to specify the minimum and maximum multiplication factors. We won't be using this technique now, but it will come up later and be a very useful technique. So I'll show you how to set it up, and we'll see the benefits of this in the next module. So we'll create two constant nodes by holding one and clicking on the canvas, and we'll turn them into parameters by right-clicking and choosing Convert to Parameter. This lets us give names to the controls. One of them will be called Min Scale, and the other Max Scale. We want to give the Max Scale a default value of 1, so scroll down in the Details view and change that default value to 1. Next, we want to blend or linear interpolate between these mult factors. So hold the L key and click on the canvas to create a LERP node. Connect the Min Scale to the A input, and the max scale to the B input. The alpha value here will be a 0 to 1 control value, which will blend between the min and max values going into the A and B slots. So we can connect the lerp node's output to the max, and we can delete the original constant we had, and now take a look at how the alpha blends between the two scale parameters. 0 0.5 will blend halfway between the two inputs. And actually, by setting the defaults to 0 and 1, the alpha becomes just like the single scale factor we had before. Next, we want to wrap all this functionality up into a material function. 